Lamentations chapter 5. Closing the book on Lamentations. Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Well, it's all by God. Consider and behold our reproach. It's the nation that sinned, not God. They have not repented either. Our inheritance, that's the land, is turned to strangers. Our houses to aliens. Well, that's what God told the Jews why the inhabitants of the land have, have been taken out of the land. Because of their sins. That Israel was to go in and wipe out all the images, all the idols, all the altars, get rid of it all. And for that very reason of their sins and their gods, God says, I'm, I'm giving you the land. But if you do as the heathen and worse to the heathen, the land will vomit you out. Our house is to the alien. And today, in America, we call these people, we call them illegal aliens. Are they going to come and take our houses or our land? I've been telling you that Jeremiah is a book of America. What we did to the Native Americans, be not deceived, God's not marked, written on this side of Calvary, what sober man saw, that he shall also reap. We are orphans and fatherless. The fathers, the husbands, the sons have been killed. They have been taken captive. And we know about Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Inigo. They were made eunuchs. Our mothers are widows. There's all kinds of death today in this world. Right now, today. I've heard so many stories of, of widows of women because of COVID-19 they can't even go to the funerals of their husbands and, and their children. We have drunken our money for money. We have drunk, drunken our water for money. America, do you pay for a water bill? Buying your water is a sign of you're in captivity. You're in captivity to your government that you wanted. No taxation without representation. We don't want to be under a king. You are under a government that has you under captivity. And Americans think, oh, we got such good freedom. Listen, I know of street preachers in other countries throughout the world. They are preaching on the streets. They are singing on the streets. And they don't get as much harassment as someone in America gets preaching on the streets. You got freedom? Don't pay for the license. Don't pay for the permit. Don't pay your taxes. And we'll see how much freedom you got. Step up in a pulpit and start preaching what they call hate literature. Speak the truth and speak it bold and speak it out loud and speak it in the public. We'll see how much freedom you got. In America today, you can't even say certain words. We have drunk in our water for money, bottled water. Our wood is sold on to us. Up north around, around winter time, you can buy wood at a gas station. Don't you dare go out in your backyard and cut that tree. 
without checking your government first. Because if you cut a tree down, they say you can't, they, they tell you you can't cut down, you lost everything. I know people who have uh, uh, people with blueprints. They're going to build a building and their architects had to redesign the whole building because of a tree or a frog or a turtle in Florida. Our necks are under persecution. Remember Jeremiah wearing that yoke? And that man came up and broke the yoke and God said, I put an iron one. Go ahead, preach the truth, preacher. Tell the absolute truth and prepare for the world to hate you. Prepare, as Paul wrote to a church, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? All the world loves Osteen. Everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be wonderful. The great God is going to bless you. The wages of sin is death. You're going to go to hell without Jesus Christ. Don't you judge us. That's not what Jesus would do. We labor and have no rest. They're under the axe. They're under the persecution of Babylon. And their sins are under a wrathful, angry God. We have given the hand to the Egyptians. You know about the Egyptian gods, don't you? To the Assyrians. And I checked today, I said, I said, what about the Egyptian god? What about this? You know, I'm really, I've really never done a stu study with the Assyrians. Israel went into Syria. That's Nineveh. Do you know a god that Assyria had? She's in your Baptist churches. Her name is Esther. The Egyptians, you know, they worship the little sun disk. The Catholics draw it as a halo. To be satisfied with bread. So all they want is bread. They don't want cell phones. They didn't have them, but they They are in the same condition they were in the wilderness. But God ain't helping them now. God ain't giving them manna. You have been forewarned about the law, the commandments, the judgments, and the statutes. You are in God's land. And God warned you over and over and over the book of Judges. God warned you over with Samuel and David and Isaiah. Ezekiel is now preaching. Our fathers have sinned. The forefathers of America. Yeah, uh, let's see. Thomas Jefferson cut up the Bible. And you got the Jefferson Bible with the perversion of the real Bible. Don't you even mention Jefferson to me. Benjamin Franklin, uh, he, he wasn't saved. His writings doesn't say he was, he was saved. His lifestyle doesn't say he was saved. I read most of the of the. You can go to the library, and there, there's like one section of a library, the shelf of of the George Washington, and his journals. And some of his journals would say Sunday, Martha, and everybody went off to church. What about you, buddy? What about you? Oh, they're a great... He didn't go to church. He's your typical Christian today. I'm a Christian, but I don't go to church. I don't learn. I don't read my Bible. Now, one time I read in about reading the Bible. 
Now, granted, I didn't read it all, so maybe I missed something. Our forefathers, you mean that they wrote the constant? Yeah, they wrote the constant. No God and no Jesus. But all the religions can have freedom. Buddha can have freedom. Islam can have freedom. Mary can have freedom. Baloni can have freedom. The Jehovah Witnesses can have freedom. Mary Baker Eddy, we wait for her phone call, can have freedom. The New Age can have freedom. The Asian religions can have freedom. Wicca can have freedom. Try to preach, preach Jesus Christ on the streets. Try to do a book report about Jesus in your school. All right, I've been more. You're mentioning God and Jesus in your essay. Oh, yes, I am going to. And you, and you rebuke me again, say, how about we just go lawyer against lawyers? I'm no ashamed to fight in the Constitution, fighting the things. You, you want to go at it? We'll go at it. And are not. Well, the founding fathers into what America used to be, it's dead. They're buried in the ground. Most of them are in hell. You can have a belief of God and not be saved. You can have another Jesus and not be saved. America is... In God we trust. Which one? Check out the yellow pages of Sea to Sinai Sea, which is actually an ocean. Count all the churches in the yellow pages. All 50 states. They not tell me what God. And there are some places you will you won't find an assembly under church. We have borne their iniquities. A perfect constitution would be, hey, your God's not allowed here. Only God, and the, God of the Bible and Jesus Christ of Calvary. We're going to have freedom for everybody. Where's that in the Bible? There was no freedom in the book of Acts. Nero did not practice the freedom of Christianity, and yet Christianity went out, and Christianity abounded and grew, the Word of God says in the book of Acts. We got the freedom. We got the King James Bible. We got liberty to go into the church. We got a liberty to sing praises to God, and no one goes to church. No one praises God. In an epidemic of COVID-19, no one calls upon God to be saved. Well, you know, the whole nation's getting right with COVID-19. They're not getting right Daytona Beach, Florida when I'm preaching Jesus. They don't even care. And they get angry. A few of them do enjoy. A few of them do pray for us. A few of them do like. That's a few. That's scripture. Many will go to Broadway to lead his destruction, and few will go through the straight gate. You're forgetting many, many will go to hell. Many will do wrong, but the few. You want the many to be saved and a few. No, no, no. You can't, you can't twist the scriptures. Servants have ruled over us. Who's the servant? Ask yourself that question. Who is the servant? Who is the man that walked up to Jeremiah and said, This has happened to you because you sinned against your God and I'm in charge of you guys? And God and me, or whatever his name was. The servants of Babylon. The servants of Babylon are in rulership. The one is set as a deputy in Judah. Now the man has been killed. Another deputy has been sent by the king of Babylon. There is none that does deliver us out of their hands. Ishmael tried. Jehanna tried. They're dead. Because that's not what God wants. We're going to fight. We're going to go. We're going to rebel. We're going to carry our... That's not what God wanted. I read a particular passage last night of the Bible before I went to bed. Jesus speaking to Peter. They that, that 
Whether you live by the sword, shall die by the sword. Aren't you going to protect your family? I got the ultimate protection. You got Smith and West, and I got Jesus Christ and God the Father. Well, what if they persecute? What if they try to kill you? I'm under the protection of God. I'm His child, and if they put me on the faggots, if they chop off my neck, I'm going to get a crown in glory. You and your Smith and West, and you and you and your gut are going to prevent yourself from getting a crown. And I believe in my heart, too bad other Baptists don't. If you shoot someone and you kill them, if that person is unsaved, you send that person off into hell. Now, I'll give you something else, Christian. You intended to buy that gun for the purpose of shooting somebody. That's intent of murder. And I know, I just lost 98% of the Baptists out there. Oh, Bullets don't kill, the guns kill by you putting the bullet in the gun and pulling the trigger. You have to plan that. I know. Baptists don't like that. That's why I'm a Bible believing, born again, saved Christian of the whole time Methodist, then Baptist at the end. We get our bread with the peril. Of our lives. Now you take that. That's tribulation period. That is the Jews out there. They're in the cell of Petra. With the Antichrist and all the world chasing them. Yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Is a tribulation passage. In order to survive. They've got to go out. In death. And there's a weird passage in the Bible that says, and God will feed them from the head of the wounded or the head of the wicked. But that's not tonight's study. Because the sword of the wilderness, yeah, and this is Babylon and Judah. But the sword also in the tribulation period is whacking off your head. You know, Paul is almost is also a type of tribulation Jew. He gets right, and everybody wants to kill him. And he loses his head in death. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. That, and that's an issue of the skin when you don't have food. And when you see those pictures of, of, of the famine nations in there, Oh, you can count the ribs, and you can count how many bones are in the spinal cord, and there, there's black and disease and ailments. You know, America has been rich with food, and she's also been rich of throwing out food. It makes me sick when a television program, like you know, I've been in the hospital, and at times I used to, you know, they make pumpkin guns, and they make watermelon guns, and they, and they waste this food over here, and they waste this food over there. Be not deceived, God's not mine. Whatsoever man soweth, he shall all three. And my grandpa, who survived the Depression, I remember nights in Grandma's house, we would have chicken. I remember Grandpa's bowls were... There was nothing on it. If you would have to give that bone to a chihuahua, to that, he would not be able to survive by what was meat on it. My grandpa would learn through the depression, you suck the meat off that bone. Americans don't know like that today. They think they just drive up to a window and, and a bag comes out. You notice the grocery stores are getting very lacking of food. You know that the, 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 the restaurants are not making business. There's one big major chain right now that's saying it's going to close up. They ravished the women in Zion, God's holy city. Ravished means they raped them. They abused them. 
Now, it's not a holy city, but you know in Kabul, in Afghanistan, they are now ravaging and raping the women. Thanks to the President of the United States, who also allows abortion to be legalized in America. We are a nation that nations look to for protection. Be not deceived, Mr. President. What sore man sows, they shall also reap. And the maids in the cities of Judah. The women are being ravaged, raped, they're, they're being abused. They're being killed, they're being tortured. We are a nation of sodomites. Love the sodomite. They got great pride. And there was a man in the Bible that came knocking on the door saying, We want that man. We want to have sex with that man. And they said, Hey, here's his wife. Take his wife. And they abused her all night. And she came to the door of the threshold of the house. And she was dead. It ain't over yet, America world. It has only just begun. And the worst will come through the book of Revelation. We haven't even reached the book of Revelation yet. The church ain't out of here yet. Princes, leadership, government are hanged up by their hand. That's cruel. David did that. The faces of the elders were not honored. You can't see that in America today. When Hurricane Katrina went through, they went to this nursing home. They found all the dead residents. In New York, they found COVID. They found all of these dead elderly and just euthanizing them. Just stick them off somewhere, and they won't be a problem anymore. There's an agency run by a hospital. We'll make death so easy for them. Oh, grandma, grandpa are sick. They're not feeling. Stick them somewhere else. Will you? America was a fruitful nation of Christ and God and the Bible when the grandparents were at home with the with their children and their grandchildren. They did not need. Daycare centers when grandma and grandpa were home. Grandma and grandpa taught value. Today we have, oh, I got such a busy life. Let grandma raise the grandchildren. No, 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 don't. I won't ever do that. I raise my children. You're going to have children? You take care of them. Not me. Going to your, well, that's no, they're not my responsibility. My daughter's learning now. There are people younger than her ordering her around. I said, you just tell them. Respect your elders. I used to say that all the time when I worked for the restaurant. I was a shift leader. No younger, I said, you need to respect your elders. Before all this crap and, and you know, Offended, and I, I told one of them, I said, You know, I said, if you were my son, I'd take you on my knee right now and give you a spanking. Today, it probably had me, had me killed for saying something like that. The elders have ceased in the gates. We're not listening to you no more. We don't care about you no more. We don't want to hear what you. That's. What Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, said. The elder people, they don't know any better. I want to listen to the kids that I grew up in school. And that split the entire nation. And they never got back together. And they will not get back together until Jesus Christ comes back in the millennium. The nation will be gathered together in the unity again. You know what they're doing instead of having the elders and, and giving... I didn't skip 13. I want to get down to the elders. They rewrite history. And you can't. 
Oh, that's not how history works. Shut up, Grandpa. Shut up, Dad. We don't want to hear from you. We want to rewrite it all. They took the young men to grind. That means you got child labor, child force labor. Oh, China's made, uh, they got the kids working 12 hours and, and, and they're making shoes and they're making your expenses. Yeah, but what is the child crime in, in China? How often are the children out there in the streets killing each other? I forget if it's China or Japan. There's a law. You got to take care of your parents. When they get old. And the children fell under the wood. Child forced labor. You can't even get the children in America to do any job. You can't even get the teenagers to work. They want the luxury CEO per profession with the top penthouse office with the penthouse living and they want the limousine and they want all the cash and they want all the money and they want it right now they just graduated from high school again the elders that see from the gate young men from their music the music is stopped playing But you see, this music not turn a radio dial. This music was men, young men, learn how to play and master an instrument. And the instrument was played. I wonder what... When I went to junior high, yeah, junior high was 9 and 10, or 8 and 9. You had to pick an instrument. By the time I got there, they stopped it. You had to pick an instrument. You had to take, I think it was at least one, one of the two years. When I came, when I went to junior high, I, I didn't have to do that. They also had it in junior high. My brother had to go through it. Two years, you could pick two languages each year, or you can pick one language for both years. You can have one one year. You can have two years of Spanish, or you can have one year French and one year Spanish. Whatever. The, when I got to junior high, that also stopped. I kind of missed that one, but but they didn't have a dial you could turn. The joy of of our heart is ceased. Now, come on, really, in America today, really, 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 your average unsaved American, are they really joy in heart? Well, they look behind their apartment door, behind their house door. With the family that upsets them. And the job they can't stand. And the alcohol they are now throwing up. <laughs> and the bills are due. And the boss is a jerk. And it takes two hours to get to work. And it takes three and a half hours to get home. And I gotta set the clock because I gotta get up at every three hours or so, and I gotta move my car from one side of the street to the other side of the street unless I get a ticket and it gets towed. Is there really joy? I find, as as a witness, many of your Catholics do not have that joy. We got one woman at the farmer's market, and, and I tell you, listen, just get saved, you get the Holy Spirit, you get love, joy, peace. Listen, in the world, I hate the world. But in my hatred for the world and how rotten the world, I've got joy in my heart. Our dance is turning to mourning. And with all the feasts that the, that the Lord has for the Jews, and at the time of, of the great gathering, and when they would take the grapes and they would make the wine, there was great celebration. 
Boaz, I forget, it was the wheat or the barley heart. They were such a celebration. Uh, he, he wasn't drinking alcohol. He was drinking. He's got just fall on a fall on a bale of hay or a bale of barley and just fall asleep. They ain't doing that now. They've been marched to Babylon. They have been destroyed, burned, infected, looking for food. The crown has fallen off our head. That's the last king. Unto Jesus Christ sits King of kings, Lord of lords. But they were also a crown of God. The nation above all nations. The city that sat as a light that Christians think God's speaking about them. He's not. That bright golden palace of God's house was to tell the world, if you want God, come over here. Now you got the dumb of the rock, and that ain't no God. Woe unto us. You know, the tribulation period, there are three woes. I believe Isaiah has seven woes. Woe is something you don't want. That word's not used today. Woe would be described as doctor gives you a phone call and says, you got to make an appointment. And you go into his office. You don't even go into the examination room. You go into his office and you sit there and he walks in and says, woe unto you. It's terminal. We can't do nothing for you. That we, we have sinned. You want a revival? That's where the church is going to say, we have sinned. Oh, no, 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 Eastern. Bring on, invite everybody for the Easter service we're going to have. Okay, we don't call it, we call it the resurrection service. The re wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you take the Passover that year and add three days and three nights, that doesn't happen on your resurrection Sunday morning. You are a liar. So you can cover up your real S-star. Well, we're going to have a birthday for Jesus in one passage. Well, we know it's not the birthday of Jesus. But you're going to have the birthday of Jesus knowing it's not you have sinned. you got to get the church to say, Lord, Easter, Esther, sunrise service, resurrection, whatever we call it. It's a sin. Our scholars and our scholarship and our degrees are a sin. Our modern perversion Bibles are a sin. Our Christmas is a sin. Our hearts coming here, though we come every Sunday, if our hearts are not right, we have sinned. We have sinned when we don't look at your word and study your word every day. We have sinned against the Holy God by after in the morning, whether as soon as we wake up or after we miss at the bathroom, that we don't thank God, don't seek God for that day. We have sinned. When we do not confess our sins and trust in He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all right, we have sinned. When we look forward to the family vacation more than we look for the blessings of God, we have sinned. And then when we do go on our vacation or we go on to that little entertainment bill on Sunday morning, we don't go see God. We don't even think about God. We have sinned. When we take that new job and we got to move out of town, we don't seek first what kind of churches are in the area. We have sinned. When our credit cards are going out of max on Black Friday, then we'll call on to God in January. Oh, where's the money? We have sinned. We have thanksgiving to say, oh God, thank you. Now hurry up, get this done so we can watch the football game. 
And then we can have Black Friday say, oh, we're not content. We're not content. And then we have Christmas morning and say, is that how you thought of me? Is that you how you thought of me? Is that how you thought of me? And we have the day after Christmas say, I need to return this. I need to return this. And then we go January. I gotta pay for it. We have not confessed our sin. There's gonna be no revival. I am against I don't believe in any revival. A revival is when you check church history, is when the bars close, the theaters close, and they turn and open up to the preachers to come on in. When they would have a bar owner, a bar owner get saved and say, Come on in, preacher, come on in, church, and destroy this bar and everything and put it in the flames of fire. Then you got a revival. Let me ask you, Mr. Church, the house of God, how many bars are within 10 miles of your radius of your church? How many places, private, street, whatever, is there illegal drugs being sold? What is the crime weight in the 10 mile radius of your church. If we go knocking on the church door, on the house door of the 10 miles of your church, would they know you're there and you have recently visited them? If we went to the co workers of your members of your church and asked them how their co workers act and do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. What would they say? We have sinned. Jeremiah is saying that, not the people. There's only going to be one other man that's going to say, We have sinned, and that's Daniel. What, what, what about the other Jews? Only three stood up and said, I ain't bound down before that. You mean to tell me there's only three Jews in all Babylon that say, I'm not going to bow down before that? Really? You can have your presence. The presence in the Bible said, we want the, we want the Bible to believe. We want him dead. And we'll make laws against him. We want him dead. That's your presence in the Bible. When it came time for Nehemiah to say, all right, I'm going to Jerusalem. Where's the Levites? Where are the Levites? They weren't even there, ready to go to Jerusalem. We have sinned. And that's not taught in churches today. The repentance has been kicked out of many churches. You're not going to get a revival. Because you need repentance. No repentance, no revival, no salvation. But Lord, didn't we have, didn't we have, you know, didn't we have chicken and fellowships? Didn't we play Jesus all? Didn't we have many people come to our service? Didn't we have many, depart from me, workers of iniquity, iniquity, sin is still charged. For this our sins, for this, our sin, our heart is faint. I got heart trouble, God, Jeremiah says. In the nation of Judah right now, their heart is faint, not because they sin. There's no food. There's no house. There's no wife. There's no dad. There's no money. There's no government. What about God? Oh yeah, there's no temple. Jeremiah's heart is... <sighs> and you, I, I know Jeremiah you know, right in, in between the lines of lamentation. I know he's sitting back at times. I warned him. 
I know he would say to God, God, you told me the word, and I, I warned him. And God would say, you remember Jeremiah chapter 1? <laughs> oh, Lord, I ain't got that book. <laughs> it ain't written yet. And what we did write is at the bottom of the phrase river, the original. God says, remember what I told you back in the beginning, Jeremiah? Lord, you said they wouldn't listen. Uh-huh. But Lord, I'd have a, what did I say, Jeremiah? But Lord, I had, what did I tell you? Come on, you think about a really good doctor. I'm thinking about a cancer doctor that my, my wife's had. And he was a great, I don't know what happened to him. But you think about his thing with cancer. Just how many people you would have to tell a day, there's nothing I can do for you. I don't remember how many times that doctor cried for my wife, Lisa. For our heart, for this our heart, not our heart, for this our heart to sin. You want a revival? How many hearts are broken because of your sins? You got a president right now who won't even bat an eye about just make abortion legal. You got a whole nation upset because Texas said we're not going to allow abortion. And all of a sudden, all these these angry, murderous hornets. I'm not talking about the ones who are going to kill the world. I'm talking about all these people. Ah, Texas, her. Really? And you're going to th you're going to say things like "God bless America." And the nation of Mexico has now also come up to say, hey, abortion is, don't you not go against abortion. Don't you not go against those who have abortion. I forget how it's worded. For these things, our eyes are dim with tears. Everyone crying just so much and you, just, you can't see. Your face is puffy, your eyes are swollen. You've been crying. Because in the mountain of Zion, that's Jerusalem. That's why they always say Jesus went up to Jerusalem. The mountain. Which is desolate. The foxes walk upon it. Foxes pretty much are scared of humans. They see a human... I used to work third shift, and I see all kinds of animals. If I, they take, boom, they're gone. Even during the day. They didn't hang around. Overpopulated foxes because the people are gone. And the Bible says the foxes did damage to the grapes, running amongst the vines. Evidently, they liked grapes or something. The people moved out and the animals moved in. Thou, O Lord, remainest forever. Thy throne from generation to generation. True. Wherefore dost thou forget us forever? He has it, Jeremiah. But do you see the tribulation? you see the seven year tribulation period there? They're, they think God's forgotten all about them. And forsake us so long time. You mean like seven years? History is going to repeat itself. You better not change it. Turn thou us unto thee. Look at that one. That's repent. But you know what Jeremiah is saying? Lord, cause us to return. Cause us to repent. In other words, when we repent, have us to repent properly. 
Oh, when Jesus Christ comes back at the, at the second advent, Israel will repent properly. And they'll be waiting for the salvation of the soldiers, as did Rahab the harlot and her family. You know, we say sell the preacher, but we're really not sure, but Tell a preacher is a rock city if you've ever seen it. And Rahab the harlot was in a rock wall. We shall be turned. There are going to be no revival if the Holy Spirit does not do it. If the church has the revival, the church. We got a revival, and we got the hamburgers, we got the greatest preachers, and we got the greatest music. If the Holy Spirit doesn't do nothing, and if the Holy Spirit does not promote the work, you don't have nothing. We had seven people come to the altar. Okay? That was last week. Where are they this Sunday? I been. I was in the church. All oh, the people that got saved. And the pastor would get up there and, and look at his face. And the pastor would say for them, they got saved this morning. And they never returned. You know what my Bible says about salvation? With the heart, man believes unto righteous. With the mouth, confession is made unto. It ain't the pastor that makes the confession. It's the people that got saved. But if the pastor makes the confession, guess who probably saved the people? Scripture with Scripture. I got to say that because certain pastors don't want to follow by the Scriptures. Renew our days as of old. You see that expression there? That's a particular expression right there. Because go over to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 3. John chapter 3. Uh, th this one, and we're not going to look at all the scriptures, but this scripture, and there's a few others. Now, Lamentations, would, though they fight about who wrote it, is a book studied by the Jews. Because they don't want to have that act, which they're living in that agony. But John 3, 9. Nicodemus, who is a scholar of Israel, he's of the Sanhedrin. Pharisees. Answer said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus told him about the new birth. And Jesus answered said unto him, Thou art a master in Israel, and knowest not these things. Now look at verse 7. Marvel not, I say unto you, ye must be born again. Nicodemus says, How? Alright, back to Lamentations 5. Jeremiah says, Renew our days as of old. There's being born again right there. There's the new birth spoken by Jeremiah. And there are other places we've come across and will come across when it's talking about the new birth. The new birth was not something that Jesus just pulled out of the heavenly feathers of geese. Angels don't have feathers. More sound is the new birth then all the Old Testament people look forward to Calvary. No, no, no. But thou has utterly rejected us. No, that's not correct, Jeremiah. Because Ezra and Nehemiah are going to prove he didn't. The coming of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, proves he didn't. The second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ knows he didn't. The 144,000 that are not Jehovah Witnesses <laughs> proves. Thou art very wroth against us. And that closes lamentation. What is the whole thing of all the destruction of sin? God, you're angry with us. Us. So when you hear somebody, God hates the sin, but he loves the sinner. What did Jeremiah just say? 
Did he say, thou art very wroth against the sin? Or did he say he's very wroth against us? Us, the people. For the people, by the people, the sinner of the people. That's the point. 